verse number 17, if you'd like to stand for this morning. The fifth chapter of Matthew is the Sermon on the Mount. The liberals love the Sermon on the Mount. You'll never hear a liberal preach what I'm about to preach to you from the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Father, add your blessing to the reading of your word and give me unction to preach this now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. The last two words of verse 22 came from the lips of the blessed Son of Man, hell fire. And there are two words, not just one where it could be misunderstood as to say hell is the grave, but he said hell fire. So in saying that, he gave a descriptive term to what hell is about. There are those who like to point out the compassion of Jesus Christ, and rightly so, the shepherd carrying a lamb. There are those who base their ministry upon his miracles and talk much about the one who raised the dead and healed the sick and cleansed the leper and cast out demons, and rightly so. There are those who say much about the kingdom that Christ came to build and how he offered himself as a sacrifice for us and went to the cross and died that we could be saved, and rightly so. But in this day and time, it's not popular at all. 19, 2008, as a matter of fact, it's not popular at all to take everything that Jesus Christ said and preach on it. For the Son of Man is the one who said, Hell fire. If you could take hell from the Bible, which most churches have today, then you could accommodate people in a different way. You could make them comfortable, for there would never be a fear of a future judgment. But according to the New Testament, there is no doubt that Jesus Christ of all people that ever lived on the face of this earth preached more on hell than anyone else. And he told us about hell, described it, laid it out in simple terms where it's unmistakable as to what kind of place it is. Here in Matthew chapter number 5, he said that it is hell fire. Therefore the word fire is included in this place called hell. He spoke of it in the simple sense that you accept it for what I say, it is hell fire. In plainer words, it does exist. The Bible makes declarations, definitive statements, declares things to be so. You can believe it or you can reject it. The Bible does not set about to prove anything. It simply says, in the beginning, God. You can say there is no God until you turn blue in the face. That will not change the issue. One day we'll all stand before God. The scripture says God created the heavens and the earth. I don't make any difference to me if you're a professor at some college or university in anthropology, archaeology, and what have you. It doesn't change the fact that God created the heavens and the earth. God became man 2,000 years ago. He came into this world and told us things that we had never heard before. We know in the Old Testament that hell is a place. The Bible said the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. We know that. 
And we know it is mentioned time and time again throughout Old Testament Scriptures. It even says that hell hath enlarged itself. Apparently, it is never full. But when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up 2,000 years ago, the lowly Galilee and the carpenter and all of that, my friend, He preached about hell. And in Matthew 5 at the Sermon on the Mount, which is supposed to be the great liberal sermon, He brought in the doctrine of hell. And He said, it is hell fire. So according to the Scriptures, hell is a place that literally exists. That's not a Baptist doctrine. That's not a Methodist doctrine. That's a doctrine of the Bible. It exists, friend. There's nothing you can do to change that this morning. Hell does exist. It is a place. It is somewhere. And it awaits those that, my friend, leave this world unprepared to meet God. Hell exists. It is a place that was created, the Bible said, for the devil and his angels. That's what the Scripture says. And the Bible says that when it was made for the devil and his angels, it was made, therefore, as a place of punishment, not a place to simply go to. It is designed for punishment. So the Bible says it is a place that is called Hellfire. If you're very smart today, have half intelligence, you ought to be doing some thinking about where you're going when you leave this world. There's one thing that is absolutely certain, and you ought to know this. You should know it and come to face with it. Come to the facts and settle this. You are going to die. You will leave planet Earth. I know you think that you're going to live forever. You'd like to put this out of your mind and not think of the fact that one day you'll draw your last breath. Your heart will beat its last time. There will be no more life left in your body. Where is your soul going? Are you prepared? I know you prepared your house. I know you prepared your income. I know you prepared your marriage, your children. You planned out your whole life. But you've made no plans whatsoever for where you're headed when you leave this world. Hell is a place. It is a place that existed before you were ever born. It is there. It's going to be there. And there's nothing you can do to change that one bit whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell. If the preachers don't preach on hell. If the seminaries and Bible colleges don't teach the young men about hell. If they extricate it from the Bible and make no difference whatsoever. It is still a place that you must deal with one day. Somebody, my friend, died this morning and they went to hell. Somebody took their last breath this day, July the 20th, 2008. They drew their last breath and awakened in hell. What a shock it must have been. There are those that deny that it exists, but that doesn't change it. One day you'll lift up your eyes in hell. It's prescriptive talk in Luke chapter 16. When the rich man died and was buried, and the Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes. It's, a, it's almost as if it says he awakened in a place that was absolutely beyond his wildest imagination. He never for one time thought that such a place like that could exist. He lifted up his eyes in hell. He became aware of his presence. He knew where he was. And from that moment on, there's not a thing he could do to change his circumstance and his situation. There is no salvation in hell. There's no Savior in hell. There's no Bible in hell. There's no blood in hell. There's no altars in hell. There's no forgiveness in hell. Whatever goes to hell stays in hell. It's permanent. It's settled. It's settled. It's over with. What you've done in this life is what determines where you go. When you die without God, you go to hell. Hell is a place, therefore, that awaits you at the end of your life. It's waiting. It's a place that, my friend, has plenty of patience. It doesn't matter if you live 150 years. It won't bother hell one bit. It's waiting. It has much patience. For it knows that every soul lost without God that departs from this world will enter into its mouth. It will take its clutches, as, as, as Joel said, and wrap themselves around it and pull it down into the midst of hell itself. It gives it an identity, a personality, almost like hell takes glee in the fact that those that die without God are entering into its presence. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why He died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. 
He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why He went to the cross. That's why it's so horrible. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's why Calvary was so horrendous. Because He would keep you out of hell. There's only one name on the face of this earth that can keep you out of hell. It's not Baptist. It's not Methodist. It's not Presbyterian. It's not Catholic. It's not Jew. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell and it's the name of Jesus Amen. folks use that name day in and day out they use the word hell day in and day out they become desensitized to it it has no meaning anymore it has no punch to it it doesn't grab the soul and the spirit and that my friend was born in hell itself Satan created that you become so familiar with the word that it's just part of the average language of, the, of people who walk to and fro on the street but hell is still existing nothing has stopped it it burns to the lowest hell that Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse 29 our God is a consuming fire there's holiness about God if you could go into the presence of God unsaved he would literally annihilate you you'd rather be in hell in a heartbeat than to come before a holy God thrice holy 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 dare walk into the presence of God without the blood covering your soul you'd scream for hell you'd beg for hell you'd cry for hell and yet I firmly believe hell burns because of the holiness of God that's what hell is about it's about a place that you go to without God somebody said hell is separation from God who told you that where's that in the Bible find it from Genesis through Revelation well I heard the greatest evangelist say that make a difference what he said what does the Bible say he'll be dead and gone and another generation will come on then another generation will come on then another generation will come on what does the Bible say we're judged by the book my friend what does the Bible say well, preacher, I want to tell you the truth. I've never read it. That's the truth. Most Christians haven't read it. They've never read it through from Genesis to Revelation. The sad state is that in the church today, most people are as ignorant of the Bible as they can be. That's why they can be tossed from one church to the next church, one doctrine to the next doctrine. It's because we are such a flim flam bunch, because we don't know anything about God or His Word. It's a sad commentary.